We're here with Potomac head basketball coach Keith Honoré, and the Panthers are getting ready for the 2016-17 campaign, the defending Group 5A state champions. As we're in the office with some of the coaches you've met, Larry Brown, Mike Shostetsky, Shaka Smart on the wall, coach. But uh, Potomac High School, you guys win the state championship. Sort of let's look back before we look ahead to your season. You guys win a tough 5A bracket, mm -hmm. and probably it was sort of different from your title a couple years ago where you were kind of expected to be the team winner. Sure, sure. Well, you know, like you say, I, I think we kind of snuck up on people uh, last year. We kind of had the perfect storm. We were the host of our conference tournament. We were the host of the regional tournament. And then once we got to the state tournament, you know, with all the teams that were left, we felt like we had as good a shot as anybody. And, and um, you know, our kids start playing well at the right time. You know, we always, in November, we, we kind of get all upset. Kids aren't playing the way we want them to. But the... Actuality goes to have them playing well in February and March, and, and we did that. So credit to our kids. You know, they played well at the right time, and we were able to have a special season. Although you graduate an all-state player in Jeffrey Gordon, a Devontae Bailey, a key role guy for you, Shamar Johnson, your leading three-point shooter, it seems like this group off your state championship has the higher expectations and a better chance to repeat because that group, you graduated four starters led by Trey Porter and Randy Haynes are now at Old Dominion. You really only brought back Ken Honore, your son, as the point guard back for that group. Um, a couple years ago. So do you feel like this year's group is more equipped to make that back-to-back -back title run? Or? You know, we'll see. You know, uh, you know, this year it's, it's, it's not about our talent. It's more about our mindset. I mean, you know, we let the cat out of the bag last year. You know, so it, it's, uh, we're not going to sneak up on anybody. You know, and, and rather than, you know, hunting, we're going to be the hunted this year. And, and we understand that, you know. So we've got to change our mindset. Uh, we have to be better this year than we were last year. I, I, I believe with uh, with all the movement that's happened, I, I think you know it's going to be important that we're a better team this year than we were last year. Let's go through some of the key guys, uh, break them down one by one a little bit, beginning with uh, Jamal Washington, an All-State mm -hmm. performer, and Nana Apoku, who's committed to Mount St. Mary's. Let's start with sure. those two guys. What do they bring to the table for your squad? Well, this year they have to bring some leadership. Okay. You know, they, it, their leadership is going to be paramount. We both know they can play. We both know they're talented. They're going to have to be vocal leaders. They're going to have to lead by example for us. Um, you know, and, and get the other guys to elevate their level of play. You know, we were able to win a state championship with two first-team All-State kids. Well, we got to find another one. Uh, and it's going to be imperative that they have leadership and bring those guys along so we can see if we do have another one. I think we know about Nana being a great shot blocker and Jamal being an all-around player. You just kind of want to see Nana show also the offensive game and Jamal can do things as being like a, a go-to guy at times. Right. Is that kind of what you want to see of them too? Or? Right. Last year, you know, we had uh, Shamar and Devontae were probably our two defensive specialists. Uh, mm -hmm. Jamar's, Jamal's going to have to do that for us this year. He's going to have to be one of our top defensive guys. He's going to have to rebound the ball. So he's going to have to do a little bit more. His role is going to change a little bit. And obviously, Nana, Nana's going to have to provide some offense for us. You know, he's got to be a little bit more selfish and look for his offense a little more than he did last year. We know when the lights are on, Eli Camp, your point guard, is going to shine as he did last year in sure. the state playoffs. Had the hurt ankle. You got him, Devin McDonald, back as well as your backup point guard uh, returning. Do you feel good about your, your leadership at the point spot? Those two I guys? do. I think Eli's kind of the X factor. I, I think he's a really, really underrated kid. Mm -hmm. I believe he's one of the top point guards in the state of Virginia. And, and uh, when he got on the big stage, he wasn't healthy, so people really didn't see his full potential. Uh, you know, he's he's really hungry this year. He wants to prove himself, and you know, and, and he's kind of taking it upon himself to kind of get us back to where we want to be. Some people wonder about the depth losing a few of those role guys, but you still have some guys that could surprise you. Sure. Byron Scriber for you, and EJ White's a name that some college coaches have been buzzing about mm -hmm. here in the off season, as he could be maybe your breakout guy. Right. Those are the two guys that I talked about that Jamal, Nana, and those guys are going to provide leadership for. You know, they're going to have to, you know, they're no longer kids that are just going to come off the bench and, and play spot minutes for us. They're going to be a major piece to the puzzle. And, you know, their, their expectations are high for those guys. You know, we feel like if they're playing to their full potential, we can be a better team. We're certainly going to be more athletic. Mm -hmm. Final one, we thank you for your time. We're here at your Metro South Fall League at Potomac mm -hmm. High School, which runs in Dumfries Mondays and Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. A little plug there yeah. through October. You got Wakefield in this game tonight, and they're a team that you probably are on a collision course with in 5A North. Sure. Albemarle's very good. Mm -hmm. You know about the South teams with the likes of Hampton, Elsie Bird, Henrico, Bethel, Green Run, Hampton. Mm -hmm. There's so many teams that could come sure. out of that bracket. Sure. Uh, knowing what the 5A field is, what's sort of your message to your guys besides just getting better? Are there any things that you kind of harp on in, in particular? Well, we have a lot of respect for those guys down there at the beach. We know there's a ton of talent down there some great, great teams, and obviously we have some great teams up here in our region. So for us, again, you know, we're not going to sneak up on anybody. We're going to get everybody's best every single night. Now, the, the thing with that is we're kind of used to that. You know, we're used to getting everybody's best, but we feel like it's going to be a little tougher this year. Um, we think 
other teams got a little bit more incentive. I mean, we we put Albemarle out of the playoffs the last two years. You know, we beat uh, Wakefield in the uh, regional championship. So those guys have a little bit of locker room material that's going to make uh, make it a little tougher for us. But we're up to the challenge. You know, we've we've uh, you know we're we're no stranger to uh, competition, uh, and and we kind of welcome it. So we're looking forward to it. We'll take care of our business here in November, and and, and then hopefully by February we're where we want to be. And we can, you know, if we're playing a team from the beach in February, March, that means we've done something good. We'll see you then. That's right. Appreciate it.